Chrome sucks. It does. Now I realize that my thumbnail and my intro there were maybe a little bit clickbaity, but I have had a real, honest to God, bad experience with Chrome hardware, and I'm gonna tell you about it. Case in point, this is my 2011 Gibson Les Paul traditional gold top. And I don't know if you can see this, but it has its fair share of buckle rash. And also the back of the neck has its finish taken off, and it's also had a headstock crack and repair. And furthermore, I don't know if you can see this, but it has a little bit of its finish taken off there naturally not done by me necessarily most of it done by the previous owner but that is to say that this guitar has age on it and the chrome hardware on it as i got it uh it just didn't match and so it still had the shiny chrome humbucker pickup covers and some of the other hardware was just like i said shiny and it didn't really match the aesthetic of the rest of the guitar. So naturally, as you may have already guessed, I wanted to age the hardware to match. And as I put this away, one of the main targets was the humbucker pickup covers. So I thought it was gonna be easy, but it turned out to be quite the ordeal. I should have known better because I've kind of experienced this before. But like I said, things didn't go so smoothly, and I'm gonna tell you all about it right now. So I started, as you'd expect, by removing the pickups from the guitar. Now, I had an idea at one point that I could actually relic the pickup covers with the pickup still installed in the guitar by taking, say, a paper towel, um, of course, removing the strings first, but taking that said paper towel, laying it over the pickups themselves, and then wetting it with like vinegar or something else sort of acidic. And then, of course, covering up like the pickup ring screws and any other hardware in the vicinity, but I could let that sit on top of the pickup and let it age, like I said, and it wouldn't be such that the vinegar or whatever solution would seep down into the pickup itself because it would sort of sit on top. Now, I thought differently about that. I've seen people do that in the past, and I got to thinking that when I've seen that done um, by people on YouTube, for example, the, the results are that it leaves sort of like the impression of the paper towel on the pickup and then it just doesn't look really natural. So I decided against that and decided to do it the hard way. And when I say the hard way, I mean I decided to take the pickup cover off the pickup itself. Now to do that, you have to cut or disconnect the solder joint connecting the cover to the pickup. The pickups that I have are actually burst buckers and there's a white label uh, as well as a black label, but the white label itself tells you which kind of burst bucker it is and it has a date on there. Unfortunately, it was kind of in the way between uh, me getting the pickup cover off. And so I had to decide how I was gonna get around that. I thought I could maybe take the label off, but uh, I realized it was gonna tear. And so I decided to just kind of uh, pick at it and move it out of the way. Uh, in the end, I kind of burned it with a soldering iron and probably ruined it, but I have pictures and I know what the pickups are. If I ever decide to sell them, Hopefully someone will, you know, take me at my word that these are actually burst buckers, but I like the pickups and I think I'm going to keep them anyway. So it's kind of a moot point. I am going to attempt to um, do this and I've seen a couple of ways, I've, you know, there's various ways to do it. One way is just to take an X-Acto knife or a sharp blade, a razor blade, and just kind of rock back and forth and try to cut through it. That's what I'm gonna to try to do first. If I'm unsuccessful, you know, there's a method of heating up the joint and then cutting it or heating up the joint and sliding something like a business card in there as it melts. So I'm gonna attempt this first, we'll see how it goes. All right, so that actually worked. I have separation. Um, so I'm going to try that with the other side and uh, the other pickup, I guess, and hopefully it works. I don't know that you can see exactly what's going on, but just rocking it back and forth. There it goes. Now I hope I'm not slicing through the pickup. For some reason, I don't think that's the case. Uh, the wines, you know, are inward of the bobbins and there's some clearance there. So, you know, I don't think I'm harming the pickup in any way. So let's um, see if we can get the cover off and then we'll move on. I'm gonna kind of wiggle it around here. I don't think these are wax potted, so there shouldn't be any wax kind of gluing it together. 
All right, so there we go. Here's your burst bucker uh, two pickup in all its glory. All right, pickup number two. I've got a little bit more room uh, with this label, but once I get my uh, soldering iron in there, I'm gonna probably burn it if I don't move it out of the way or try to. All right, there we go. Three down, one to go. Really don't want to slice my finger. All right, should be good. Now, as far as relicking the pickup covers, my plan was as follows. First, I took a scotch Bright pad, one of those yellow sponges with a rough green surface on the back, to the entire surface of the pickup cover. As I understand it, a scotch Bright pad is supposed to be equivalent to a very fine sandpaper, but unfortunately, it left what appeared to be some pretty deep scratches in the pickup covers. My next step was to apply blue painter's tape strips to give the appearance of string wear. This happens inevitably with any kind of metallic pickup cover. Over time, the strings just sort of make these shadowy lines and give this appearance. Next, I placed the pickups in a muriatic acid bath. Hey, hey, what? You know you don't have to tell them every detail about your terrible experience, right? Well, yeah, but I've kind of already started. Dude, you edit the videos. Just take this part out. As a matter of fact, just take all the previous stuff out and Get to the point. Yeah, but they've already seen all this stuff, so it's kind of too late. <sighs> You're pathetic. Yeah, you, you go back in your little door there. That was weird. As I was saying, I placed the pickup covers in a muriatic acid bath. If you're not familiar with this method, it's not actually a bath, it's just something I call it. But you take a muriatic acid, or it could be hydrochloric acid, something really acidic, and you don't actually immerse the hardware into the liquid, you just expose it to the vapors. So in my case, I took this little blue container and put it and the pickup covers in a bigger orange Homer bucket, and that was my sort of muriatic acid bath, uh, exposing the covers to the acidic vapors. And what that's supposed to do is sort of accelerate what would naturally happen over time. So after I put the covers in this sort of acid bath, I would take them out, exposing them to the air. What that's supposed to do is kind of oxidize them and accelerate the process even further. And again, make it seem all kind of natural, or that's the point anyway. But I'll let you in on a little secret, as by now I'm sure you've guessed, Chrome just does not want to cooperate when it comes to aging. So in the midst of all this, I decided that I did not want the pickup pole pieces themselves to not match the pickup covers. So if, for example, I got the covers to have the appearance that I wanted them to and look kind of old, I didn't want the pickup pole pieces to be bright and shiny. So in my mind, I went back and forth with a couple of ideas of how I could pull this off. But in the end, I just decided to rough them up with some sandpaper, hoping that no metallic pieces would stick to the magnets and damage the pickup in some way. I don't think that was the case, and it turned out pretty well. So I pretty much repeated this general approach hoping to get a result I was happy with. I put the covers back in the bath and then I removed the tape, hit them with a thousand grit sandpaper and the scotch bright pad again, hoping to get the appearance of the deep scratch marks out. So then I put them back in the bath, took them out again, and let them sort of haze overnight. And when I say haze, I mean that I did not remove any of this sort of acidic condensation on the covers and I just left that there and let it do its business overnight. Then I got the idea actually from someone else on YouTube to cut strips of scotch Bright pad and sort of sand between the tape. And I thought for some reason this would give me a better result, even though I'd kind of already done that to begin with. After that, I was sort of getting fed up and I took a Q-tip and applied muriatic acid directly to the covers between the tape. Then I took the tape off again and applied more muriatic acid with the Q-tip to the entire pickup cover surface. And then I hit it with a scotch Bright pad yet again. And finally, I got so fed up that I immersed the entire cover completely in acid. They continue to have scratches in them. It seems like no matter what I do, I could, you know, like figure out um, a grit to start with and then just go up in number to try to kind of polish it back out and hope that it still looked kind of a matte finish. Uh, you will see that this kind of has a haze on it and it, if it has the haze and it remains cloudy like that, then the scratches kind of disappear and that looks pretty cool like that. But here's the thing, it's just kind of uh, cold right now and the haze is just kind of like condensation on there. So if I do like this and wipe it off, the scratches come back. So I I think these are kind of a loss. At this point, I decided to just give up and I bought some raw nickel covers, which are actually installed on the guitar right now. The ones I got were all parts brand, even though I didn't get them directly from all parts, kind of from a third party seller. 
I think I got them on eBay and they were uh, an inch and 15 sixteenths pole spacing. Now, some of these pickup covers are different. So you want to check your pole spacing if you're going to get some of these and make sure it is correct. Otherwise, they won't line up. So even though I bought these new nickel covers, I still had to install the chrome covers back into the guitar. Reason being, I recently made a video about how I changed the potentiometers in my guitar and I wanted to keep the playing field level. In other words, I didn't want to change any of the variables for the sound clip comparisons. If you're interested in that video, you can watch it by clicking on the eye in the upper part of the screen. So I put the covers back on the pickups, quickly soldered them up, checked for continuity, and then installed the pickups back in the guitar. So that being said, since I had already made sound clip samples for the chrome pickups, I thought, what the heck, I'll make the same clips for the nickel pickup covers and make a little comparison. Now, I'm not saying these are gonna sound any different. As a matter of fact, they probably won't, but I've always heard, for example, with a tele neck pickup, if you have one that's made of brass or bronze, it's gonna sound darker than one that's made out of nickel or steel. I may be getting this confused, but nonetheless, there is a difference in the sound based on the makeup of the metal. Now, in this case, both chrome and nickel are just coatings on top of the steel pickup cover. So again, I don't know that it's gonna make that much, if any, of a difference. So when I finally got the nickel covers, I had to install them, of course, which seems pretty easy considering what I had already been doing, but then I got down this rabbit hole of how to install them properly. The Burst Parker pickups that I have are not wax potted. You can look further into that, but what it basically means is that the pickups have not been dipped into wax to let the wax permeate the pickup windings, but that's a little bit different than having wax between the pickup and the pickup cover. The whole purpose of potting a pickup is so that you don't get unwanted feedback at high gain. I personally don't play high gain a lot and I've never had an issue with feedback with these pickups, but while I had the pickup covers off, I wanted to take precaution and ensure that it doesn't happen in the future. Now I did a bit of research and it seems like there are quite a few different methods of trying to buffer that space between the pickup and the pickup cover. They range from double-sided tape to foam to painter's tape to wax, etc., etc. For me, it seemed like the easiest and possibly the most effective way was just to use wax. So I got one of my wife's candles while it was hot and I dripped wax into the pickup cover. I installed the pickup cover onto the pickup into the guitar, and that was that. Before we get into the sound clips, I realized that the only chrome hardware we've talked about up until this point is pickup covers. And I know what you're saying. How can you judge chrome by its cover? But I present to you another piece of chrome hardware on my Les Paul that was difficult, if not impossible, to relic. It was the pit guard bracket. I basically used all the same methods that I tried on the pickup covers. I tried roughing them up with sandpaper, doing the acid bath stuff, all that to no avail, of course. And so I broke down and I bought a nickel pit guard bracket. The one I got was from True Custom Shop, and when I got it, it was shiny nickel, and so I had to age it myself, but it was very easy to do. I roughed it up, exposed it to some vapors, and it was done. It looked very naturally aged, and I was happy with it. And as a random side note, I noticed the difference between the heights and the pit guard bracket that I assume originally came on my Gibson and the replacement. And as I was replacing the bracket, I realized that the short height of the original one caused the screw to make contact with the top of the guitar, causing a nasty divot. And so that kind of sucks. And I'm curious as to why Gibson used this bracket originally on this guitar. All right, that's it. Thanks as always for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Do it. See you later.